So last year, we published a study showing that people gain fitness twice as fast in functional sports, such as CrossFit, if they completely separated strength and endurance work like Metcons by a full week. The results were super interesting, even for us, but obviously received quite a bit of critique, specifically about the exact tests we used to actually evaluate the efficacy of the study and also whether this kind of training method is actually practical to implement in real life. That's why we are back. We are back with a new study and we call this Project Hybrid 2.0. Obviously, our goal is to address some of these critiques to learn from the things that have been said and also to provide real actionable insights for the community. In this video, I will break down the background of this study, why we are actually doing this study, the exact study setup and why it might be valuable for you if you're watching this to actually partake in this study, which starts on April 7th. All right, let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology, and now I want to bring some of that science back to you guys. Okay, let's talk about concurrent training. Concurrent training is really something that has fascinated scientists for decades now. And it basically means that an athlete or a person combines two different types or different modalities of sports into one session. For example, you do five by five back squats and then concurrently or at least immediately after you do some kind of cardio training, for example, cycling or let's say a Metcon in CrossFit. We are interested in, in concurrent training, obviously, because it has been applied or it is very applicable to many sports. The epitome of concurrent sports are kind of popping up right now, such as high rocks as well as CrossFit. Those obviously use concurrent training all the time and actually they are concurrent sport or hybrid sports but then obviously also other sport more conventional sport such as team sports or even endurance sports right like cycling where they use some type of strength training to improve their overall performance has been used for the last 10 20 years so obviously there's a lot of interest from the field to understand what is actually the effect if you train both modalities in one session right is there an interference of your strength training towards your endurance adaptations or vice versa and this is what this overview study uh, looked at combining many studies uh, together looking at this effect of or this interference effect and i really wanted to show you this study because they used a nice graph that really makes everything very visible so what you see here on the left side is the effects of concurrent training or only strength training or only endurance training on hypertrophy. Obviously, when you do strength training only, the effect size on hypertrophy will be high. You will have effects on hypertrophy. I mean, that's pretty clear. If you only do endurance training, which is the green bar here, you obviously have very little to no effect on hypertrophy. I think that's pretty clear now if you have been watching this, this channel for some time. But then the interesting part becomes, if you combine both, you have, let's say, an inferior effect on hypertrophy. You have, a, let's say, a diminished effect on hypertrophy. The effects are still there clearly but there is some kind of less adaptations right that's kind of what what most of the consensus in the field uh, says then on the other side if you look at vo2 max for example a pure endurance parameter that has been looked at in research a lot the maximal uptake of oxygen uh, in the body then these effects of concurrent training kind of fall away, certainly in rather untrained individuals. If you do only on strength training, obviously there's no effect on uh, endurance parameters, uh, unfortunately for all the power lifters under us. But if you do only endurance, obviously you're going to improve your VO2 max. But if you combine both, you see nicely that the effect is not diminished. And that's pretty interesting in my opinion. And that's also something we see more and more in, let's say, untrained individuals. So let's say if you look at pure conventional sports where you combine strength training like global gym work leg extensions back squats and so on with pure cycling specifically cycling also a bit of running you see these effects popping up that's pretty nice for more uh, conventional sports right but what about athletes who are closer towards let's say a crossfitter or a functional athlete and then i think i can explain a very cool study that has been done in rugby players and rugby players obviously they have to be strong they have to be big and they also have to be able to run fast and pretty long so they are pretty close to what i would call an, an, a functional athlete right and uh, this was done in professional rugby players so that's also good to always have a high trained athlete cohort from the rugby seven in france and so what did they do just to skim over uh, the study they had five different 
groups. So they had five different cohorts of professional athletes. One group didn't do any training. One group did only strength training, which was uh, back squats and bench press. Obviously, that's what they like in the, the rugby world. And then you had three other groups that did also first back squats and bench press, followed by a more endurance type interval style training. And this training was done or straight after, concurrently after the strength training, so this would be zero. Then they separated the strength and the endurance part by six hours, so one group, and then the other group, the last group, uh, separated the strength and endurance part by 24 hours. And here you see some interesting things popping up, right? So look at the concurrent group where they really did everything, let's say, concurrently, back to back. You see a nice increase, for example, in strength, but the effect is actually diminished when you compare that to the groups that really separated the strength and the endurance by six or 20 hours. The same is kind of true for VO2 max, so the effects on VO2 peak, um, but there it looked that if you uh, separated the strength and the endurance part by 24 hours, not 6 hours, but 24 hours, you had the best effect. Importantly, if you combine, so if you train concurrently, you do have effects or positive effects both on strength and endurance, but if you separate those a sessions, it seems that the effect is still a little bit better or a large, a larger positive effect. Pretty cool stuff. So obviously this is super interesting, a really well done uh, study in rugby players, but rugby players are still not CrossFit athletes, right? They have some resemblance, but they're not CrossFit athletes. So what we did last year, we set up our, we call this hybrid study 1.0, um, and it's a study where we uh, try to recruit people from our community. So that's a, one of the first times I think that an online platform remotely recruited uh, uh, people uh, online to to partake in in a project in a study, and we want to 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 look at this interference effect and if we could actually diminish this e interference effect in specifically CrossFit style training because obviously in CrossFit this concurrent effect is extremely important, right? And what did we do? What what the study set up? It was pretty extreme, I would say. Uh, the first, the commercial group, so Group A on the left side, simply did I call this affiliate programming, where four times per week they first did a strength session, right, followed by a workout of the day. The strength session was weightlifting, uh, was uh, back squats, deadlifts, like the compound lift, and then the workouts were usually high intensity to medium uh, high intensity of a Metcon style, like a 12-minute MRAP of burpees, box jumps, and pull-ups, something along those lines. And then we used several tests, I will get to the test in a second, because that's key for this video, uh, to evaluate how good they became, like how uh, much better their performance be became, right? But then we also have group B, and group B was called, uh, we call this like the hybrid group, where they did exactly the same training as group A, but they just completely separated it, and they completely separated it by a week. So week one, they did only strength, so did the same compound lifts as group A, but just cranked in one session. And then they just did only strength that week. And then the next week, they didn't do any strength and they only did workouts and, and metcons and endurance type workouts. And what did we test? Because obviously that's very important. We did, we tested quite a lot of strength and a lot of squatting. We did uh, first the CrossFit Total as well as Fran. Uh, so that involves already a lot of uh, squatting, obviously, a lot of strength. And, and Fran, obviously with the thrusters, has quite some uh, squatting, obviously also some pull-ups uh, there. And then another day, we tested the 1RM clean and jerk, which is usually also a squatting. They could do a squat clean. Uh, an all-out squat test, that's quite an interesting one, where we put a barbell on their back and let them do as many reps as possible with their body weight uh, back squats, right? So again, again a really uh, squat-specific test. And then we also did a 2K row, which is not exactly squatting, but obviously it's the same motion, it's the same squatting motion. I made a video about this, exactly this hybrid 1.0 study. If you want to look at it in much more detail, please just check the link that is popping up right now on the screen. I will talk about all the tests, exactly how we set up the study, how many participants there were, and so on there. Please go there because I, I don't have time to fully go through that test now. But what did we see quite nicely? If you add all the tests together, let's say you, you make a general leaderboard, we see a nice 7.8% increase in the traditional commercial style uh, CrossFit group. So the, 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 the people who trained strength and then endurance or, or Metcon in one session concurrently, nice 8%, but almost a double or a double increase in the one who trained the hybrid style. Right? So that's super interesting, in my opinion, that they actually improved more, if anything. And this was also significant, this effect. So one thing I found super interesting and where actually I learned a lot from is the fact that when you put something 
like this, like the hybrid 1.0 study out there very transparently, you get a lot of comments. Usually this, this doesn't really happen, right? Like in science, you publish a scientific paper into a scientific journal. You do get some reviews from, from peer review from other scientists. Sometimes you get a, a comment in your email, uh, in your email list, but obviously there's not that much, yeah, going back and forth about a certain paper. But when you do this, like what we did here, to, to transparently put everything out there via Instagram as well as YouTube, you do get a lot of comments. And some were pretty valid, I have to say, and some were less valid. So let's go over some of those comments and what we can actually learn from them. So one of the major comments we got definitely, mostly from people on Instagram, is that we used the wrong terminology. We initially called the commercial group, the the, the group A, uh, who trained like strength and then endurance, the traditional CrossFit style group, workout group. And this was uh, clearly not a good idea because a lot of people said that traditionally CrossFit, the methodology states that you shouldn't actually train like that. You shouldn't actually do first your strength and then your Metcon. You should separate it more and you should yeah train with, with let's say, less volume. I, I, I tend to agree, and I think it's just a matter of terminology and, and how you define this. Uh, but I want to, to, to put forward is that I have been doing CrossFit for, I think, 14 years now, and almost every session I've ever done in my affiliate is always strength followed by a high-intensity Metcon, right? And if you look at the bigger programming platforms out there, such as, for example, HWPO, let's look at their program, right? Let's look at their flagship 2.0 uh, program. Let's go to their app, and let's see how um, they actually program and how they, they think about, let's say, uh, CrossFit uh, training for everyday people or people who want to get better. So flagship 2.0, let's let's look at tomorrow, the 25th. This is uh, recorded on the 24th. You see here, uh, first warm-up, then strength into a Metcon. Okay, interesting. So exactly how the group A is training. Then Wednesday, the 26th, is going to be also a primer, which is like um, uh, clean deadlifts, uh, floating uh, clean pools into a Metcon and then followed by some accessory. Exactly the same. And then to their credit, I think on a Thursday, they do provide some uh, more conditioning style workout where they do, let's say, one hour of pure conditioning, which would be uh, zone two, into a swim. And then on Friday, we look first again at uh, strength into a Metcon. All right. It goes on like this all the time. I don't want to critique them at all, right? I'm just saying this is how they're programming the flagship uh, event. And I guess thousands, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people are training like this. But that's obviously only one platform. Let's look at other uh, platforms. Let's look at, for example, Proven Fitness, Proven Go. Let's look at Sugar Watt here. Tomorrow, the 25th, what are they doing? Strength into a sweat torse hammer, which is a 10 calorie row, elevated dumbbell floor press and dumbbell bent over rows, All right? So that's already exactly the same. Then on uh, Wednesday, what did they do here? So that's in two days, first accessory, and then they do only uh, conditioning. Uh, I think, yeah, so an only a move workout. So also a little bit like HWPO, you do first some, some heavy days and then into a more conditioning day. And then let's see how it uh, evolves. On uh, Thursday, uh, they do a warm up into strength, dumbbell inclined bench press, so upper body strength and, and some flies into a sweat, which is locked in, right? So you get the deal. Most of these big programming websites are also programming strength and then into a Metcon. I mean, again, no critique, but that is just how most people train. So whatever you call this terminology and what, whatever you want to criticize our group A, many people are training like this. So it's, it's still valid from a scientific point of view to understand and to research this on how we can potentially optimize this just for performance, just for getting better at uh, CrossFit. And then another comment that we got, and I think that one was clearly a bit more valid, was about the testing. As you saw in uh, a couple minutes ago, we did a lot of, let's say, strength biased and squat biased testing, CrossFit Total, Fran, rowing, the, the all out squat test and so on. A lot of hinging, a lot of squatting. And why did we initially think about that a little bit naively, I would say, uh, in, in, in retrospect, is that there have been some, some good studies showing that squat strength specifically and how good you are in squatting, like back squatting, front squatting and so on, is going to have the best correlation towards your open performance. So they, they took all kinds of variables and squatting seems to correlate the best with open performance. So that's why we based most of our testing on squatting. 
there's pro, there's cons, and I, I, I agree that this was potentially not the best idea. We could have added a little bit more med cons or open style workouts in there to see if our, if our athletes actually got better into specific CrossFit style training. Because as you can see, we only did one really CrossFit specific uh, workout, which was FRAND. And that's also quite very specific. It's like a four minute one and another, not an open style, which is usually 20, 15 to 20 uh, minutes, right? And then a third critique, which is not really a critique in my opinion, is that many people said that you cannot really uh, apply this into real life. I mean, who's going to train strength first for a week and then endurance and so on? It's it's pretty yeah, like not, not very uh, good training and no one does it like this. Makes somewhere sense and I, I I do tend to agree although we did launch a training program after this and a lot of people are actually training in this way and they're still doing it after six months right so there must be some uh, validity in it and it must be also quite fun to do but still I agree that most athletes most coaching platforms and so on won't be doing this exact training setup so what did we think about in our hybrid 2.0 which we just literally launched to, to sign up for last week on Instagram. So hereby you can go to the link in the description, the first link in the description and sign up for, uh, let's say, partaking in this project. It's 10 weeks of free CrossFit training for you. The only thing we ask you to do is to do the pre and the post testing as well as doing 80% of all the trainings we prescribe, right? You can sign up via Strive. It's a very easy process. And obviously you will benefit a lot to let's say the training science and the knowledge in functional sports as well as CrossFit. And what will be the setup of the study? I think that's quite uh, straightforward. We will do exactly the same as a hybrid 1.0, but we won't separate the trainings of group B by a full week, but by just one day. So here you see it. Group A is, is, is training, as I already discussed, first strength followed by a Metcon or by an endurance type of workout. And then group B is going to be more this hybrid style uh, training where they do one day, for example, on, on Tuesday, they do only strength. And then the next day on Wednesday, they do only conditioning. Importantly, both groups, and that's cool about this study, I think, do exactly the same training. It's just separated differently. They do exactly the same strength parts, the compound lifts and so on, and they do exactly the same metcons. It's only separated by one day or just concurrently. And then obviously, guys, the tests. And that's also one of the reasons I actually made this video, to get your thoughts on which tests we should and could use. Think about it as we have five days to test, right? We have five training days. And you don't want to completely kill the people, obviously, right? You want to test them, but they also need to be able to recover and they have to be able to do this uh, in one week. We want to test strength. We want to test more endurance capacity and we want to test metcons. And then we also want to test most of the movements in CrossFit. You can actually do some ladders where you go from pull-ups to chest -to bar pull-ups to bar muscle-ups. So you also increase some skill. If you are interested in thinking about this, go to the comment section and fill out your, let's say, ideal test week. That would be super useful. We have already a very good idea now. I mean, the tests start in two weeks, but maybe if some people have some great ideas to implement which tests and why, this would be super valuable for us. And please go to the comment section and add your thoughts there. That would be highly appreciated. All right, that was it from my part today. Super excited to get this study going. If you still want to participate, it is possible. Just go to the first link in the description and follow the steps via Strive. Also, if you're interested in training science and you want to learn more on how to improve performance in functional fitness, I will be hosting, at least in my opinion, a super interesting seminar weekend in CrossFit Grenzgänge in Berlin. It will be the 12th and the 13th of April and I still have four or maybe five spots open. So go to the link in the description for all the information. I think it is something you really cannot miss. All right, that was all from my part. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe and also like the video and uh, see you in the next one. Ciao.